tame your email? Come check this out. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Micah Gonzalez, that's M-I-C-A, Gonzalez with a Z. And today I'm going to show you 10 of my favorite Gmail tips and tricks to spend less time in my inbox. That's right, because I believe the less time you spend in there, the better. You know what I mean? Let's just jump right in with the first Gmail tip, which is using filters. So you may or may not know filters are a thing on Gmail, but in case you're new to it, you can set up a filter rule that kind of works like an automation and can get your inbox organized. One of my favorite ways of using filters is creating one for some of the favorite newsletters I get. I'll show you an example. So I just go ahead and create a filter that uses their sender email as an example. Let me use Lenny's newsletter, one of my personal favorites. Then I go to create filter and there are all these options you'll see here. For this use case, I'm going to select a couple different options here. Skip the inbox, so archive it, and apply the label to read or to watch. So that means every time I get an email from that address, it's not going to go in my inbox where I prefer to keep things that I need to take action on, like paying bills or something, and it'll instead go to a dedicated folder that I'll check every so often, since cool resources from newsletters that I stay subscribed to aren't really urgent anyway. Personally, I'll maybe go through this label once or twice a week, see what's recently got in there, then decide if I want to keep anything super valuable in this label or if I can safely delete. Doing this just makes organizing my inbox so much easier and it makes sure that I don't miss out any email because they're organized into cute little labels that I can refer to at any time. Which leads me to my next Gmail tip. Use labels and sidebar conditions. So labels are like folders for your inbox, but way cooler because you can have one email appear in multiple labels. Create labels for specific projects, clients, or even personal categories like travel inspiration. You can see mine here organized in all sorts of ways with labels for household things or health or business. And combining this with the previous tip, here's how I can really tame my inbox quickly. I'll go to the labels you see here on my sidebar. Then for the most non-urgent things, I click on the three dots here. And under in label list, I click show if unread. And what this does is it hides the label from this sidebar on my email, which makes it less distracting. But also every time there's an unread email in that label, it'll show up in the sidebar. So you won't need to worry about emails you're worried about missing because they'll appear when something new comes in. And in case you want emails in specific labels to always be hidden, you can also completely hide a label from your sidebar in the same settings. The third tip I'm going to mention is one that I surprisingly find many people still don't know, so I'll keep it quick. You can snooze an email in your inbox, so it'll pop up at the top of your email later. To do this, simply hover on the right-hand side of an email, then select this snooze icon. You can then set a date and time for Gmail to temporarily remove the email from your inbox, but it'll automatically reappear at the schedule that you set. I typically use this for important time-bound things like bills I need to pay before they're due. Tip number four requires a third-party app, but don't worry, what I show you here only needs their free plan. And that's to boomerang emails that don't get a response. We've all been there, you send an important email, you cross your fingers for a response, and then... Where in the previous step, I mentioned that you can snooze emails that you received so you can get them another time, but there's no actual way to remind yourself to follow up with somebody for any emails you might have sent. That's where the boomerang extension for Gmail comes in. It lets you boomerang any email you send to automatically remind you to follow up with somebody if they haven't replied within a time frame that you set. After installing Boomerang, you just have to write your email as normal. Go over here to the bottom where new settings have been added to your email composer, then set it up to remind you after whatever number of days if you haven't gotten a reply if the email isn't clicked or if it isn't open. Super helpful use cases can be if you're working on a project with time-bound deadlines or if you're applying for a job and want to follow up without forgetting and things like that. Tip number five to breeze through your Gmail inbox is to embrace the email template. Look, I don't know about you, but I find myself typing the same responses to similar emails over and over again. Whether that's someone wanting to partner with me on this channel or someone responding to some campaign that I'm running at work, it just saves so much time to save a response as a template, then click around a couple of times to apply it versus typing it from scratch or trying to find the copy and then copy paste it, keeping it in a notes app, that sort of thing. To create a template in the email composer, once you're done writing or pasting your template, hit the three dots, go to templates, then save the draft as template. Give it a name and voila! This is exactly where you'll find this template for when you need it next. 
And that wraps up tip number five, making us halfway through this video. If you're learning anything new, I hope it's okay to ask you to like and subscribe. I'd love to know if I should keep doing more videos like this. So thank you very much. Let's go to tip number six, which is maximize the Google Drive integration. Look, Gmail and Google Drive are both Google products. So it makes sense that they're super easy to integrate these two things. This has been a feature for a long time on Gmail, but I find that a lot of people still don't really make the most of it. So real quick, next time you have something in your Google Drive, whether that's a Google Doc, a saved PDF, or really anything at all that you want to attach in your email, just go to the bottom toolbar here in the Email Composer, click the Drive icon, then look for the file you want to attach. Depending on the file, you might be able to attach it as a Google Drive link or as an attachment. But either way, this saves you so much time and energy from hunting for your file in your computer or your drive, then downloading it, then grabbing the link or whatever. This way, it's only a couple of clicks. Tip number seven is actually another one of these things that I thought was super popular and obvious, but still surprises me that some people don't know about, and that's scheduling emails to send. Look, it's the 2020s. It's not cool to respond to emails at midnight. So do yourself a favor and schedule emails to send later by hitting this little arrow in the send button, clicking schedule send, then picking a date and time to send your email. Thank me later. Tip number eight is for people like me who just love signing up for things but don't have enough email addresses to go around. Use email aliases. So let's say you want to create a second account for, say, Reddit. You don't need to use a different email if you don't want to. You just have to use the plus sign next to your email username before the at symbol. Then insert something like a number or a name. So for example, if my email is micah at gmail.com, my alias might be micah plus one at gmail.com. And just like that, you've made yourself an alias. The best part about this tip is you will be managing or creating like five different inboxes. Any email that gets sent to this alias you used ends up in your one main inbox. And if you used it to create an account somewhere and need to log in, you just have to use that alias that you set and you're all good. Tip number nine is a favorite of mine for flying through my inbox really fast. Enable the auto advance feature. What if I told you you didn't need to click through your emails one by one? Enable auto advance to automatically open the next email in your inbox after you finish reading the current one. This just saves you the extra clicks and it keeps you going if you're sitting through clearing your inbox. To do this, go to the settings icon, see all settings, advance, then where it says auto advance, hit enable. Then go back to general, scroll all the way to where it says auto advance and you can specify the behavior that you want. I use go to next or newer conversation and that just helps me breeze through my emails really, really fast. So this last and final tip is how I take a peek at emails without marking them as read. The reading pane. When you enable the reading pane, you can opt to display the email content you select next to your inbox so you can see what's inside, but again, not mark anything as read. So in case you want to peek at the email, then come back to it later, you didn't have to mark the email as unread again. To do this, go click the gear icon to open quick settings, scroll all the way down, and where it says reading pane, you can select to view a reading pane on the right or the bottom of your inbox. I personally prefer the one that sends it to the right. But another important step is to make sure that your emails really stay unread when viewed from the preview pane. So you can head over to the more settings, scroll all the way down to where it says preview pane, and then select the behavior that you want it to have. And when this is enabled, any email that you had unread in your inbox, you can select, and it essentially lets you peek or preview the email without marking it read for whatever amount of time you choose. Pretty cool, huh? Google's released a lot of amazing tools and features like this to make everyday things like email better, but they've got a lot of other cool tools with even cooler features to get your life organized. I recommend watching this video next about Google Calendar tips and tricks you might not know yet, or check out this playlist for more digital productivity videos.